Hello everybody, this is Jeff Janess, and welcome to our first lab exercise on GIS applications and wildlife analysis. This one we're going to take a look at environmental envelopes, which are one of the simplest ways to classify potential habitat for an animal. It's you just basically identify the range at which an animal appears to use a particular habitat type find the minimum and maximum values of that, and then you take multiple such habitat variables. And, and the environmental envelope is just that region of the landscape that lies within the ranges of all of the habitat variables simultaneously. Now we're going to practice with a really simplified example based on Mexican spotted owl habitat. And, you know, sometimes these environmental ranges are not that well known. We don't really know everything there is to know about different species. So we're going to try this environmental envelope for spotted owls three different ways using uh, different ranges of habitat variables. In all three analyses, we're going to be looking at the landscape that lies within a certain slope range plus elevation range plus canopy cover range. We're just going to change up the ranges of those three variables. Now, the first analysis asks to find all regions of the Coconino National Forest with a canopy cover greater than 50%, slope greater than 15%, and elevation greater than 7,000 feet. And we're going to use the raster calculator to find this out. A quick note, uh, just in case you try to run the raster calculator tool and it tells you the tool is not licensed, you might have to go and turn the license on. And there's a separate video for this, just a little one minute thing, shows you how to enable your spatial analyst license if you have to. So go ahead and take a look at that real quick. All right. We've loaded up the data we care about, the Coconino National Forest, plus the background raster layers that we're going to analyze. We're going to use the raster calculator tool that's in the analysis and tools. It's located in the spatial analyst tools in the map algebra box. We'll just click on that to start it. So the first analysis has a canopy cover range, a slope, and an elevation range. So let's do each of those independently for this step here. First, we want to find all the regions of the Coconino where canopy cover is greater than 50%. Pretty simple. We just double click on this. Greater than or equals to 50. Okay, now let's name it. I'm going to name it CC for canopy cover, GTE for greater than or equal to underscore 50. And we're going to do this several times, so it'd be good to name it in a way that you're going to know what the variables mean. Hit run. Okay, this is the portion of the Coconino in which the canopy cover is greater than 50%. Just to symbolize that a little cleaner, I'm going to just turn off the zero value. Oh, and just in case it's not clear, the tool produced a raster with zeros and ones. The one means it met the constraint, the zero meant it did not. So the purple is all that's left that has a canopy cover greater than 50%. Okay, we got part of the analysis done. We got the canopy cover part. Now we have to find the areas with the slope greater than 15%. Okay, it's real similar. In fact, I'm just going to work straight from this window. Slope greater than or equal to 15%. We're going to name this slope GTE15. Okay, hit go. Okay, in purple here, we have all the regions of the Coconino with the slope greater than or equal to 15%. So we've got canopy cover and slope handled now. Now we just have to find the areas with elevation greater than 7,000 feet. All right, let's delete that. So DEM greater than or equal to 7,000. I'm going to call this All right, and here are the regions that are greater than 7,000 feet. 
All right, so the final analysis asks for what regions of the Coconino meet all three of these simultaneously. So we need elevation, we need slope, and we need canopy cover. All right, so we can use the raster calculator to combine all these three just the same. So we fire this up. Here are our three rasters. Now, if we just entered it in like this and use the and symbol to to have multiple constraints. Okay, this is a query that will work. Uh, it, it takes this and identifies all the areas that are true. And remember, true is represented by the numeral one. So all the areas that have this where it's equal to a one and this. That's how it, it asks whether each of these three are true. You actually could do it a little more complicated where you could do, you could, you could ask specifically whether each raster equaled one. Um, if we did that, it makes it a little bit more complicated of a query. First of all, if you have to put each separate thing into parentheses and you have to use a double equal sign to ask for equality. Then we do that for each of these. So that's also a legal query. We could do either one of these. The easier one clearly would just be to do this one. Okay, now let's give it a name that makes sense. Okay, canopy cover at 50, elevation at 7,000 and slope at 15. All right, so where are the areas that meet all of those simultaneously? Okay, and there they are. And if we turn on the hillshade, we can actually see the uh, landscape underneath there. We can zoom in and see, see, see exactly where on the landscape these areas are. So these are the areas that meet all constraints simultaneously. <laughs> okay, now that's got the first analysis. Now, we did that in a series of steps. We first calculated the canopy cover, then we did it again with slope, then we did it again with elevation, then we did a raster calculator a fourth time to find all three regions simultaneously. A uh, raster calculator is actually a pretty powerful tool. We could have done all of those at one go if we had done uh, elevation constraint, remember we have to put multiple constraints within parentheses. If we did greater than or equal to 7,000 N symbol. Then we did the slope at greater than 15, close parentheses. Oh, it needs to be greater than or equal to. And canopy cover at greater than or equal to 50. Well, we get all three constraints at one go. This time I'm going to call it version two, what we did before, CC 50, canopy cover 50, elevation at 7,000 and slope at 115, just call it V2, hit go. It gives you the exact same raster, just all in one shot. See, we just turn this one on and off, we see the exact same thing underneath. So the raster calculator is a powerful tool. It is a little tricky. It can be really easy to enter in stuff incorrectly, and it, it, it's real prone to giving you error messages, but it is a powerful tool. Okay, so that took care of analysis one. Okay, our second analysis is really similar. We're just changing some of the ranges of the variables. Um, this time we're gonna try it with canopy cover greater than 40%. Last time we did it with greater than 50%. Uh, the slope and elevation ranges we're gonna keep the same. 
Now I'm going to take advantage of the fact that I just demonstrated that tool using all three variables at once. And if you remember from our geoprocessing lecture, you can actually hit this history button and see the last functions you've run. Well, this is the last one I ran. I'm just going to open that up. I am going to change this right in here to 40. I'm going to change my name of my raster to 40. That's all I have to do to rerun this at Analysis 2. Now we're, we're taking more regions of the landscape, right? Uh, canopy cover is a lower threshold, so we should be getting more of the landscape with this version. So let's take a look. All right, this is canopy cover at 40% with elevation and slope is the same as the last analysis. Now we look at it canopy cover with 50% and it is a little bit less. Take a lower threshold, we get a little bit more area. All right, so you know if we decide that spotted owls can handle canopy cover greater than 40% just fine, then we might as well go with this one because it, it does allocate more area to the habitat. Now the last analysis we're going to keep canopy cover down at 40% again, slope at 15%, but now we're going to take elevation down to 5,000 feet. We've, maybe owls can handle that lower elevation. Uh, so let's see what the landscape would look like if we did use that environmental envelope. I'm going to use the last tool I ran again just because it makes this so much easier. All of this, the canopy cover is good, the slope is good. All we have to do is change the elevation to 5,000 feet. Come here and change the name of our output to 5, hit go. And here we see we have allocated much more landscape as potential owl habitat. And that's really all there is to environmental envelopes. Like I said, it's, it's a really simple and intuitive analysis. Now for the, the homework question on this, uh, I want you to think about these three analyses and decide which one you would prefer as uh, your final analysis for spotted owls. There isn't a right answer. I just want you to think about it and defend your answer. Uh, any, any of those three options would be fine as long as you can offer a rationale for it. All right, thanks so much, everybody.